this prayer we're talking about today really does something to me. I have a tendency toward the emotional. I get emotional when I talk about the youth. We've all, we've all seen that, I think, at this point. And sometimes when I talk about my family or mentors that have meant a lot to me, and I really get emotional when I am seriously confronted with the amount that I am loved by God. Upon realizing this, not too long after I started working here, one of our youth looked at me, shaking her head one day, and said, You are such an epog. What is that? It sounded like some science fiction thing that I obviously wasn't going to know about or possibly some shortcut text language that I didn't know. Um, But she said, it's an emotional pile of goo. (laughs) Oh, well, yes, and I am guilty of that. And yes, this prayer, reading it over and over, turns me into a total epog. At the beginning of this summer, I find myself thinking about my little brother a lot. He's not so little anymore. He's 25, and he has his MBA, and he has this really fancy job that I don't really understand. And he's getting married in a couple months. So as we build up to Kyle and Annie's wedding, I keep getting taken back to our childhood and the things that we shared together as kids, the ways that we loved each other well, and the ways that we drove each other crazy. This story is about how Kyle loved me. When I was about eight, my mouth was just completely filling up with teeth. You know how that happens when you're about eight? (laughs) Just filling up with teeth. So I was going to have to have some pulled. And so when I went to the dentist, um, my mom went back into the room with me. But my brother, in the 80s, remained in the the waiting room just by himself at five years old. Um, He was left under the watchful eye of the receptionist at the office. And when we came out... That receptionist came to me to tell me, your brother must really love you, and he must be really, really worried about you, because he prayed over and over while he waited. And he prayed these words, God is great, God is good, let us thank him for our food, amen. (laughs) God is great, God is good, let us thank him for our food, amen. He loved me, and he wanted to talk to God on my behalf. He obviously knew that prayer did something and that it mattered. It made a difference, but he just could pray the only prayer he knew. It was a critical time in my young life, and so it was a critical time in Kyle's, and he prayed for a person who he loved. Jesus prays this beautiful prayer at a critical time in his ministry, After he has washed the disciples' feet and gone through the Last Supper and taught them many things, he finds himself in this moment, apart from them, in this transitional time of separation from the disciples that is leading to the cross and the resurrection. On the eve of his death, he steps away, slows down, he speaks to God, and he does so on behalf of his friends the people who were as close to him as family, the people he loved dearly, the disciples, he prayed for the faith community on the eve of his death. Jesus has been responsible for God's mission, and the responsibility is now being passed on to the disciples. These disciples who have been dazzled and bewildered and confused all the way through the Last Supper, those disciples, he vouches for them and he prays for them. Yes, this part of the prayer was about them, but we surely need this prayer today. Yes, those guys were confused and lost, but so are we. Whether historical or contemporary, this prayer is about the faith community, and that includes us. We're a faith community, and that mattered to Jesus. He trusted that under the protection of God, the faith community would not only thrive, but it would change the world. It's taking me a really long time to get to the point. But the foundation for the point is that these are the things that Jesus chose to pray. This is what mattered. This is what he needed to say to God in those precious moments. This is how much he loved us. I want to lift two things that Jesus deemed so important he prayed them this night. Two things that were so important for the faith community as he was leaving. Two things that we would probably be wise to allow shape our community's identity. 
The second part of verse 11 says, Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. So that they may be one as we are one. Our relationships with each other are to mirror the inner life of God, the Father, and Jesus, and the Spirit, mutually supported, no one better or more important than another, giving space to one another and allowing each other to live into the fullness of who we're called to be, caring deeply and intentionally for one another so that they may be one as we are one. For us to get to where we're going, we'll need to be one. They'll need to love each other. They'll need to welcome new people. They'll need to be accommodating and patient and sympathetic. They need to find pleasure in the needs of their neighbors being met. They need to hold one another accountable in mercy. They don't always need to agree, but they need to disagree gracefully. They need to work hard and work together. They need to pray for one another and for the community so that they may be one as we are one. And we can't dodge this as if it's not meant for us. Because in verse 20 and 21, after the text for today, he went on to pray for all future believers. And he said, I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. On the eve of his death, Jesus showed his extraordinary love for his friends and for us. He loved them, and he loved us so much, he prayed for us. With all that before him, he steps away, he slows down, he speaks to God, and he asks that they be one as we are one. And this is where we turn to the second important thing that Jesus lifted up. In verse 18, he says, As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. Sent into the world is kind of a strong phrase. Jesus didn't need them to be isolated in their oneness, congratulating themselves for their unity. He wanted them out there. He wanted them out there engaging with the world. As distorted and difficult as that world is, Jesus wanted them out there. He refers to himself as the one that God has sent into the world. And this verse gives us a share in that mission. We're invited to continue the work that he started. He sent them to continue God's revelation in the world. He trusted them, and he trusts us. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. For us to get to where we're going, they can't just stay cooped up. They've got to get out there. The people who gather and worship and break bread and have fellowship and learn have to take the love and the mercy and the grace that they receive by being part of that community, and they have to share it. They have to spread it. They have to let the love they receive here overflow so completely from them that they can't help but pour into other people. They have to turn strangers into friends. They have to go. They don't need to all do it the same way, in the same manner, but they need to go out there and be my people in the world. As you have sent me into the world, so I send them into the world. On the eve of his death, Jesus showed his extraordinary love for his friends and for us. He loved them, and he loved us so much that he prayed for us. With all that was before him, he stepped away, he slowed down, he speaks to God, and he declares us sent into the world just as he had been sent into the world. First, we must be one, and then we must understand ourselves as sent. There could not be a more perfect text for this particular Sunday. Before us are our seniors, our graduates. They find themselves perched between two worlds, looking back at the world that they have known, looking around them at the world that is familiar and safe, and looking forward to a strange new world that is waiting for them. There is a sense of reflection and holding on to things as they are, but there is a sense of urgency to get out there and get on with it. They find themselves sitting in a world that has given them strength, about to embark on a world that will require them to show great courage. There is good news here for our graduates today. But there is absolutely good news for all of us. 
As we prepare to send our seniors out, we remember that we must be sent as well. Our sending out might not be much of a milestone today, but we are all sent. We are all sent from the sanctuary each week into a world that requires our courage. Some sendings happen once in a lifetime, but some sendings, they happen every single week. There's this song I love by a Christian artist named Derek Webb, and it's called Take to the World. With urgency, he sings, and these are some of the lines. Go in peace to love and to serve, and let your ears ring long with what you have heard. And may the bread on your tongue leave a trail of crumbs to lead the hungry to the place that you are from. Go and go far, take light deep in the dark, believe what's true, use it all, even you. And take to the world this love, hope, and faith, take to the world this rare, relentless grace. So go. Graduates, take to your world. Take to your world the things that you have learned in this place. Take to your world the experiences that have shaped you. Take to your world the faith that sustains the moments that have given your life meaning. Take to your world the very people that you have become. And friends, take to your world. Take to your world love for your neighbor. Take to your world hope for the hopeless. Take to your world faith for the lost. Take to your world joy for those who despair. Take to your world kindness for the lonely. Take to the world peace for those in turmoil. Take to your world patience for your children. Take to your world respect for your parents. Take to your world healing for the broken. Take to your world generosity for the poor. Take to your world this rare, relentless grace. Take to your world your very selves. People who understand the profound love of a Christ who prayed for his friends to be one and to be sent. Take to your world.